Nowadays, we have a lot of architecture to choose from and build our applications. However, none of them solve an important problem, how to efficiently manage side effects. A side effect is an event that modifies the app state outside of its local context. This might cause unexpected behaviors and could be really annoying to debug, especially in large applications. For example, you update an array of data, but in another place of your app, another piece of code is assigning an empty array. This could be done by many reasons like a network call, a notification, or simply by another controller that is getting access to your state. There wasn't a right approach to solve this yet. That's why two friends from Brooklyn decided to create an architecture with composition, testing, and ergonomics in mind. The Composable Architecture, or DCA for short, was created by Brandon William and Stephen Sellis, founders of Point Free Project. Based mainly on Redux and Elm architectures, but adapted to feel at home in Swift to build apps on Apple platforms, DCA is opinionated about how to manage side effects and make them easily testable and deterministic. If I had to explain composable architecture in one diagram, it would be like this. We have a view where the user taps a button. That event sends an action into a reducer function to do a task. This reducer lives in a store object that keeps the state of the app alive during the runtime. Given the action, the reducer will proceed to mutate the state accordingly. Since the view is observing the state, that mutation will produce a new render in the screen. But there is more. Once the state mutation is done, the reducer must return an effect object that contains logic from outside world to be executed. For example, a network API, notification, timers, or any framework that is out of our control. Effects might invoke other action if needed. And the reducer will interact with an environment object that contains the dependencies required for our app. This object will be really convenient for testing later. TCA is not just a concept. You can actually work with it using a dedicated library. Let's see the basics with a very simple example. To get started, create a new Xcode project and add composable architecture package. TCA is supported for both UIKit and SwiftUI frameworks. For this demo, let's use SwiftUI. First, let's import composable architecture and set up the state of your application by creating a struct value type. In this case, the only state's property is a counter. Don't forget to make it equitable. Next, we need to add a set of actions that can mutate the state. Let's create an enum with an action to increase the counter and another one to decrease it. Don't forget to make it equitable too. You will understand the reason why equitable is required in just a moment. Next, we have to create the environment object. This is mandatory, even if we don't need it. If that's your case, then just declare it empty. We will dive more about environment in a later episode. Next, we have a concept called reducer. A reducer is a function that will receive an action to transform the state accordingly. A TCA reducer contains info about the current state, the current action sent, and the environment managing dependencies. For example, if we send increase counter, the counter will increase its value by one. In TCA, the reducer is the only one capable to mutate your state. No one else in the app can do it. Once the mutation is done, a reducer must return an effect object. Some actions don't need to execute effect, like this one. In that case, you can just return none effect. Once the effect is returned and the state mutated, that will trigger an update in our view. But wait a second, how can we actually see updates in the state? And how can we send action to the reducer? For that, let's introduce the concept of a store. A store is the object that you will pass around to views that need to interact with the application. It holds the whole state of your app. However, this store is just a core object. We cannot observe state changes or send actions to the reducer from here. TCA has a dedicated view store for view layer that can react to state changes and is capable to send actions to the reducer. Just declare a view store with state and action types and create an initializer to set up view store. Don't forget to add observe object like any Swift UI property waiting for changes in the state. By the way, view store is the reason why state and action 
must conform equitable. It needs to compare previous and current state and actions to trigger updates. You can start building your view right now. However, if you are working in Swift UI, there's a better way to initialize this with an explicit view store property. Instead, let's receive a regular store property and use a special view provided by TCA called with view store. That view will wrap and observe view store for you. Just pass the regular store as parameter and it will be available inside the scope. Let's initialize the view with the store. It will require the initial state, the reducer, and the environment. Now you can build your UI inside of with view store view. Once the UI is ready, now it's time to produce changes in the state. For that, we simply need to send action to the reducer through view store. Inside the buttons action closure, let's send decrease and increase actions respectively. Congratulations, your first TCA app is ready. Wait a minute, Pete. Having one single state for your app, that will break the single responsibility principle, right? That's true. The idea is to keep one single state for your whole application in TCA. However, we don't want that every piece of your app got access to everything, especially if it's out of its scope. Here's when composition and effects comes to play. This is just the tip of the iceberg in TCA, and this little demo will be part of a larger application that simulates an e-commerce with a list of products that you can purchase and send to a cart. We will explore more features of TCA, like composition, environment, side effects, testing, and more. Stay tuned for the next videos. But if you can wait, you will find a link with the e-commerce demo already done in the description below. Thanks to Stephen Sellis that helped me with some TCA questions that made this video possible. If you want to support the TCA creators, go to pointfree.co where they have more than 20 hours of TCA content, including how they made TCA step by step. But not just that, it's a great resource to maximize your Swift knowledge. And don't forget to check out more Swift content from my channel in the description too. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.